who needs Iron Man when we've got Iron Heart now? You know, I, right. I, I, three hours for Wakanda forever. <laughs> I know she's going to be there. Uh, she'll be stunning and brave. I guarantee it. <laughs> My so. favorite part about these promotional clips that got released for Black Panther, it's like, these are the three clips that they put out there because they wanted people to actually watch them, not so they could get roasted. But you have what, what the, the smartest girl in the world, 15-year-old Riri Williams, who builds her own Iron Man suit, who is throwing, like, space heaters at Wakandan warriors to prevent being body snatched and put into some sort of weird uh, weird human trafficking situation. Man, you know what? Yeah. The women, women took charge of Wakanda. Everything went to shit. It's weird, huh? <laughs> we um well as on the real bbc the other night when i was there um subjected Mauler to that clip Ugh. and oh. um just watching it, your reaction Mauler was kind of interesting because it's like you genuinely seem baffled as to what was happening <laughs> why would you release what those is... clips to promote the movie why would you do that <laughs> Really because those are the best it, ones yeah I, I was gonna say yeah there's two possibilities well, either they really misjudged what they should release and you know it was just a bad clip or it's genuinely one of the funniest clips they could pull from the the movie in which case that film is fucked because... well what are people generally saying about it because i know people have seen it what, what's the what's the what's the shill saying are they having trouble appraising it or what? i saw one one person only one person come out with a less than glowing review and by less than glowing i mean he said it was really really good it just wasn't quite as good as i thought it was going to be and Predictably enough, I'm pretty sure the wagon circled and he was called a racist. So yeah, and it's... that's the thing. You know, like all of them know that they can't criticize this movie. If they do, even if it's for the most genuine, uh, you know, objective reasons possible, they're gonna face an, a mountain of hate. So I, I think this might be one of the biggest gaps we've ever seen in the critics versus the fan reaction to something. It, I it's think gonna you're be right. I think it's going to yeah. be huge because these critics do not want to criticize this movie at all, especially obviously with the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman and that, that that's surrounding it. But just the the identity politics of the marketing that goes on with these this film in particular, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I'm, I'm waiting to see with that whether or not um, they do, as you know, when Stan Lee died and they, they rejigged the Marvel intro, so it was all clips of, of his cam Stan Lee's cameos in it, and whether they'll do that with Chadwick Boseman in Wakanda Forever, and then if they do that, everyone will say, isn't that a really lovely, heartfelt, touching tribute? And we'll all just forget the fact that they used his Twitter account after he died to market the film. Mm -hmm. In other words, like turning a zombifying uh, an actor that they're now claiming they're really, really going to be careful with. So uh, they'll want us to care an awful lot about what they're doing and pretend that they're being sensitive and sympathetic, but that's not what they are. That first trailer was like so over the top. Hey guys, you remember that Chadwick Boseman tragically fucking died, right? Go see this movie to support him. Like it, it was over the top, the amount that they were using his face and his death to promote this. Uh, yeah, but I mean, we'll, we'll see if it pays off. I, I think, um, I, I did kind of, I mean, I, maybe like is the wrong word, but like, I thought the trailer was okay for what it was. Are I we talking about the good... first one? Yeah. The first one I didn't hate. Uh, and, I mean, look, I, I, I thought Chadwick Boseman was a you know decent actor and a decent dude, but it was how he, his passing when we found out that he was suffering with that for so long and he didn't tell anyone, which kind of said a lot about him as a person. And so I kind of was like, you know, I felt the emotions of that trailer from a real life perspective. But as soon as it's like moved into the territory it's in now, it feels really hollow how they're trying to approach this film. Yeah. I, I don't think as well because it's it's pretty much confirmed that Shuri's going to be the the new Black Panther, isn't she? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. yeah. Um, I I just think you know that's a tough character to sell to people. <laughs> like uh, T'Challa was was you know he was he was perfectly fine. Like he was awesome in Civil War. Um, you know, a bit of a, a a wet rag in his own movie initially, but uh, you know. He's obviously played by a good actor. Um, but with Shuri, it's like, she's really annoying. She's really insufferable. She's really arrogant and, and abrasive. And I just think, Christ, how are you going to get people to buy into her as the new hero for Wakanda? Uh, yeah. I think that's a tough one. And I just wonder, it probably won't happen because I'm sure this film will be another cultural moment, as they love to say. Um, 
but it does make me wonder if they're not going to recapture that magic of the first film. Like, they're, they're not going to get such wild, overwhelming, critical praise that they did for that first film because it's it's the ballpark has just changed so much now. They, uh, they, they can't call it like the first black superhero movie ever, even though they lie about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. They can't. They, there's no more black. Sorry. There's no more glass ceilings that they can shatter with That'll this. Be funny as this fuck, is though. just like it has to stand on its own merits. The sequel to Black Panther is the first black superhero movie. <laughs> I mean, the, the first, the first sequel to the first black superhero movie ever. Hey, please don't talk about Blade. Please don't talk about Blade. Uh, yeah. Wait, is this what, would they be able to mark it as the first black female superhero? Catwoman. S Storm Four doesn't count. Try. Halle Berry's Maybe. Catwoman. With her own movie, yeah. Yeah. I, you're right though about Shuri. It's like, th that's her, that's okay to have, that's acceptable to have in a movie where she's like a side character and not the lead to have one of the just annoying you know, characters like that. If you're going to propel her to be the Black Panther going forward, that's a different story, especially when you're putting in Riri Williams, who's also that type of annoying know-it-all character as a yeah, young it, girl. It, it, so. it would be like, I don't know, if Han Solo got, like, sorry, if Harrison Ford got killed or something, like, in the original trilogy, and they had they replaced him with fucking C-3PO, and he had to be the new, <laughs> like, Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, it's that level they, of like, they, no, you're not they, capable of doing like, this. Re re replace him with Watto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Disney could totally market this as the first black superhero movie with a sequel where the star died. Uh, they could totally they could, pull yeah. that one off, I and I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't pet, put it past them at this point in time. They, oh, they will uh, pull every fucking trick to sell this movie to you. <laughs> then they'll blame it on the trolls when they get backlash for it typical disney fashion ha have all you guys bought your tickets for opening weekend and given them to a black person yet <laughs> <laughs> well i didn't know if that was going to be presumptuous you know so i just yeah. thought i would bow to I'm, each I'm, of them i'm stuck on apologize i'm stuck on w which one it's supposed to be because there was the one person on was it tiktok who said that if you go and see it at all that's probably racist and then there's the usual one which is that if you don't go and see it that means that uh, a black-led film can't draw a white audience because racism and now there's according to the editor of whatever magazine that was yeah if you're buying a ticket as a white person give it to a black person instead is it are you trying to patronize black people as much as you possibly can because that's yes. one way of going about it that's exactly what they're doing uh, it, it's weird because you know I, I'm well known for wanting to listen to the advice of every random arsehole on Twitter that I encounter <laughs> you know and if they tell me I have to do something then I have to do it and oh no they're giving me conflicting advice what am I to do I, listen, so it, 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 I, I think that if they really wanted this movie to be successful you, you've got a perfect template here uh, and he's already established that he could play the role if they just would have brought Robert Downey Jr. back he could have totally transformed into this role. It would have yeah. would have made two billion dollars worldwide, no questions asked. Lincoln uh, Osiris is <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we've all seen the posters. Ryan Gosling is waiting. He's he's ready. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. Somebody um cropped. There was a, a press pack thing with Timothy Chalamet, and um, somebody cropped it so the last few letters of his name were sort of hidden. And uh, it, I think it's spelled T'Challa, and so people were saying, oh, well, yeah, maybe Tim Chalamet could be um, recast as, as the Black Panther. That would be a progressive move. <laughs> I, I think, well, I think that uh, Wakanda needs to be more inclusive, quite frankly. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, sh they need to let migrants, refugees in and, and give them opportunities to succeed. And what better opportunity is there than letting one of them become um, Black Panther? It's the ultimate success story. You know, like a, a poor immigrant child moves to Wakanda, works his way up the ranks, and becomes Black Panther. Yeah, I think by punching just, someone harder than the other guy punched him. You know, <laughs> the, the the way I see it is, think of all of the young white men that are out there that have been desperately trying to see themselves as Black Panther for decades and decades, and they just couldn't. You know, I think we really got to give those young white boys something to look up to and inspire them in some way. I'm all for that. I, I genuinely couldn't couldn't understand any any aspect of Black Panther because you know he doesn't look like me. So clearly, I couldn't <laughs> identify with him. Couldn't understand his struggle um, or his character motivation. Yeah, so that's the only way to let people like us in, I suppose. They've got to looking sound exactly like we do. That is the Wakandan um, dream. Um, but <laughs> it's it's the other thing I was sort of 
perplexed by is because I don't know exactly how the law of succession in Wakanda works, but I seem to recall that you could be challenged as king. And if you're challenged as king, then you have to forgo the, the magic goopy juice and you can't use the armor and it's just a fist fight on top of a waterfall. So if Shuri is now Black Panther, does that mean that someone could challenge her and essentially all they'd have to do to be king of Wakanda is kick a 15 year old girl off a waterfall? Is that how this yeah. society works? I, as okay. far as I understand it, yes. During like the coronation is the only time you're allowed to challenge people, right? Isn't that how it works? And so I don't I remember so. that so much. Once you're but... in as king, then you know that's that's your kind of uh, you're locked in. Then I don't think if you yeah, even though Killmonger challenged him into his well into his role, so I, I don't I don't know exactly, but yes, you are right. She would be stripped of her powers and then forced to fight someone hand to hand, including people like. Is it like, theoretically uh, possible to be Black Panther but not be king of Wakanda or queen? Oh right. <sighs> So I guess it would be her mum should be having to fight people in a fist fight? Don't ask questions, uh. just consume next product. Stop. I want to see, see, I want see, see Umbaku was... go into a fist fight with her mum, come on. <laughs> <laughs> see, if, now if this was House of the Dragon, everything would be laid out spe in specific detail. We know exactly how this succession was supposed to work and all the different people involved in this. So, yeah. just saying. Everyone's motives. Mm -hmm. Is, isn't, that, isn't that interesting? It's like this sort of medieval culture of um you know of house of the dragon is actually way more sophisticated and civilized than the the hyper progressive wakanda <laughs> with yeah. their fucking I magic I was... bullshit spaceships and their shields over the entire country you know um, it was like five years ago now or whatever when i when i saw that that they actually had like a trial by combat for the king i was fucking blown away i was like isn't the whole idea that they're hyper advanced and then yeah we had the god that was a time on the internet where it was like it's their culture <laughs> like, what do you mean? It, it's fake. It's just made up. They didn't have yeah. to make it that way. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, they just they had to put in this super advanced society, just showing the slums where it just looks like every third world country in America it, or it not wrote, America. In the I, I world. just I want some yeah. alternate plot it's where some fuck? absolute brute of a man who's just amazing at fighting kills the king during that trial by combat, becomes king, and is just <laughs> utterly destroys Wakanda just because he's an asshole. Uh, do, do we think this movie's actually going to hit like a billion dollars? Like, I mean, that's the I question. Got, I got nothing. I'm predicting you know, what the hell is going to happen I, with this thing. I, 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 I tend to believe it's going to be successful, but I, I thought, I thought the last Thor film was going to hit a billion too, and I was clearly wrong about that one. Mm -hmm. um, they have hurt. No matter how you feel, like obviously the 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 Marvel Cinematic Universe is has been hit significantly. Oh, yeah. from, from from for, for a lot of reasons and it has now it's still going to do good it's still going to make decent money but it's hard to tell how the marketing for this film's going to go but i don't feel i don't feel like the buzz is there for the film mm -hmm. i feel like the buzz is there to honor and remember chadwick boseman but i don't feel like the buzz for the film is there if that makes sense I'm yeah. not even getting that much of a, a buzz to remember him. I'm just not seeing a huge amount about it at all. The first one sort of rides the wave of the MCU sort of reaching its peak or, or maybe just slightly past its peak, but it was still very near the top. And I think it was, you know, you could argue the rights and wrongs of it, you know, whether it should have been, but it was a cultural moment. I worked in a, an escape room at the time that film came out. And without fail, if you had a team in to play the escape room and they were, you know, they were majority black team, then they would all do Wakanda forever. And it was just everyone did it. And it was week after week after week. And that's the kind of like the on the ground permeation that, that that's, you know then that this film has got traction, it's got momentum, and there's something in the cultural waters that's keeping this thing alive. And I'm just not, I'm not seeing anything about it. I've seen a few reviews from people who've, who've seen the pre-screenings. I've not even seen a huge amount of sort of preemptive think pieces attacking fans as racist, which you'd normally know is a sign that the thing's got some, you know, weight behind it. Um, I've seen a few, but I just, I just don't see a huge amount from this film. And every other, you mentioned Thor Love and Thunder, which, which sort of, you know, does a really strong opening weekend and then tanks. That does seem to be the, the experience of the majority of MCU films these days. And so maybe it's just the case of whether or not the film's any good in its own right. That cultural moment as part of the whole MCU, never mind the specific one to Black Panther, is just gone. And we're not, we're not going to see maybe another billion dollar MCU film, certainly not for a while.